China's Tiangong, Heavenly Palace, isn't just a space station, it's the most modern outpost humanity has ever built in orbit. At around 400 kilometers above Earth, this shining white laboratory circles the planet every 90 minutes, carrying a crew of Taikonauts who live, eat, and work inside a station that looks more like a futuristic apartment than a piece of Cold War hardware. For decades, the International Space Station, or ISS, has been the crown jewel of human spaceflight, a collaboration between five space agencies and more than a dozen nations. But it's also more than 25 years old, and now a new player has entered orbit. Between 2021 and 2022, China built and fully assembled an entirely new station from the ground up in just 18 months. And it's not just smaller or newer, it's smarter. So strap in, because this is life inside China's Tiangong space station. Before Tiangong, China's human spaceflight ambitions were limited to a few test missions, small single module laboratories known as Tiangong-1 and Tiangong-2. They were stepping stones, short-term missions to test docking, life support, and crew endurance. But in April 2021, that all changed. China launched the Tianhe Core Module, which literally translates to Harmony of the Heavens. At 16.6 meters long and 4.2 meters wide, it serves as the control center, power hub, and crew quarters of the entire station. A year later, the station began to take shape. In July 2022, the Wentian module, Quest for the Heavens, was added. It brought an entirely new science laboratory, additional living space, and an airlock designed for extravehicular activities, China's equivalent of NASA's spacewalks. Then, in October 2022, the Mengtian module, meaning Dreaming of the Heavens, joined the structure, completing the T-shaped station we see today. Mengtian is dedicated purely to research, housing advanced experiment racks, and external mounting platforms for instruments that study everything from fluid physics to space materials. Each launch used China's most powerful rocket, the Long March 5B, lifting these massive modules into orbit one by one, where robotic arms and precision docking systems linked them together in a seamless ballet of engineering. By December 2022, the station was ready for its next milestone the first in-orbit crew handover between Shenzhou-14 and Shenzhou-15. For the first time ever, six Taikonauts were living and working inside Tiangong simultaneously, marking China's official transition to continuous human presence in orbit. Today, the Heavenly Palace is fully operational, a T-shaped three-module outpost orbiting Earth every hour and a half, and the foundation for what China says is only the first phase of its long-term plan for permanent human spaceflight. Step inside Tiangong, and the first thing that strikes you isn't the size, it's the clarity, the light, the lines, everything feels deliberate. People often say that Tiangong feels less like a space station and more like an Apple store in orbit. Despite appearances, the overall diameter of Tiangong's modules, about 4.2 meters or 14 feet across, is almost identical to those of the International Space Station, but the difference lies in their length. On the ISS, America's Destiny Laboratory measures around 8.4 meters or 28 feet. China's Wentian and Mengtian modules each stretch more than 18 meters, nearly 59 feet long, more than twice the internal volume. That means fewer junctions, fewer tight corridors, and a much more open, continuous workspace. Inside, the station is wrapped in smooth white paneling, concealing most of the cables and systems that clutter the ISS, much of Tiangong's equipment is wirelessly connected, reducing the need for tangled cords and bulky routers. Everything, from the air filtration units to the experiment racks, is designed to be modular, replaceable, and neatly tucked away. The result is a minimalist, almost futuristic look. And it's not just aesthetic. Those clean surfaces are easier to disinfect, the bright LED panels reduce visual fatigue, and the evenly lit walls make for clearer video during live communications and science broadcasts. Behind those panels runs a network of power conduits and life support systems, designed to automatically reroute if a fault is detected. The modular sections connect through pressurized tunnels, each equipped with independent environmental control, meaning the crew can isolate a section of the station in seconds if there's a leak. Everything here, from the materials to the lighting, is meant to make life in orbit feel normal, even calm. And for the Taikonauts who spend months away from Earth, that serenity matters.
Aboard Tiangong, life follows a rhythm. At any given time, three Taikonauts call the station home. During crew handovers, like in December 2022, that number briefly grows to six, filling every bunk, every workstation, every meal seat. Their day begins just like ours, with a wake-up call from Mission Control in Beijing. After personal hygiene, which includes a rinse-free shampoo and wet wipes instead of showers, the crew gathers for breakfast. Meals are sealed, reheated, and labeled with each astronaut's name and nutritional plan. Then it's down to business. The morning hours are spent checking experiments, calibrating instruments, and performing maintenance. Everything from software updates to tightening loose handrails. By late morning, the crew joins a live video conference with engineers and scientists back on Earth. Here, mission planners outline the day's objectives, approve experiments, and schedule exercise sessions. Around midday, there's a mandatory one-hour rest period, a long-standing tradition in China's spaceflight routines. Even astronauts in orbit need to recharge before the second half of their day. Afternoons are filled with research, biology, material science, fluid physics, depending on each module's experiment racks. Exercise sessions are scheduled for at least two hours daily to counteract muscle and bone loss. Evenings are more relaxed. Dinner together is a shared ritual, sometimes featuring favorites like Kung Pao chicken, braised pork, or dumplings. Afterward, they might stream a TV drama from Earth read or send video messages to their families. Occasionally, the crew records short live streams, showing Chinese citizens what life is like aboard their heavenly palace. When it's time to sleep, each Taikonaut retreats to their private sleeping alcove. There are six small bunks in total, three in the Tianhe core module and three more in Wentian. Each one is barely larger than a closet, lined with soft insulation to block noise. Astronauts strap themselves upright in sleeping bags fixed to the wall, floating slightly inside as they drift off while orbiting Earth at 28,000 km per hour. Inside every bunk, a small tablet for video calls, personal photos, and, if you're lucky, a tiny window with the best view in the universe. Food in space has come a long way from toothpaste tubes and dehydrated mush. Inside Tiangong, the menu rivals that of a small restaurant with over 120 varieties of meals carefully designed to meet nutritional needs and comfort cravings. Rice, noodles, fish, pork, chicken, vegetables, soups, and sauces, all pre-cooked, vacuum-sealed, and labeled for rotation. Each dish has to survive months of storage and the extreme vibrations of launch. Every few months, Tianzhou cargo ships dock with the station, delivering not just scientific supplies, but fresh produce, apples, oranges, even cherry tomatoes. It's a small taste of home that keeps morale high when home is 400 kilometers below. But the real game changer is hidden in the galley. Right there, beside the fold-out dining table, sits a piece of technology no other space station has ever had, the world's first space microwave. Developed by Galan's Aerospace, it took nearly 10 years of engineering to make it work. Unlike a home microwave that guzzles power, this one runs on extremely low wattage, and it's built to withstand launch vibrations and radiation without frying its circuits. On the International Space Station, astronauts use a warm water rehydrator. It takes about 30 minutes to heat a meal. Tiangong's microwave can cook dinner for three in just seven minutes. It may sound trivial, but in space, that's revolutionary. Hot food is comfort, and for Taikonauts on months-long missions, that warmth isn't just physical, it's psychological. Living in zero gravity looks effortless, until your muscles forget what standing up means. Without regular training, astronauts lose muscle mass, bone density, and circulation strength at alarming rates. So aboard Tiangong, exercise isn't optional, it's mandatory. Every Taikonaut spends at least two hours a day working out. Their gym might be the smallest in the universe, but it's surprisingly advanced. In the Tianhe core module, a compact treadmill and cycling station are bolted directly into the floor grid. Elastic harnesses keep the crew anchored as they jog, and soft straps reduce vibration so the entire station doesn't start bouncing with each stride. In the Mengtian module, there's a rowing and resistance machine. China's answer to the ISS's massive ARED, or Advanced Resistive Exercise Device, which can simulate up to 600 pounds of resistance. Tiangong's system is smaller, sleeker, and far more efficient, offering the same muscle activation in a fraction of the space. Look closely at footage from inside Tiangong and you'll notice something else. 
Footholds and straps line the floors and walls. Unlike the free-floating astronauts of the ISS, Taikonauts often prefer to stay anchored, giving their brains a stable down reference that reduces disorientation. And while official details are limited, CNSA prototypes have hinted at smart exercise suits, clothing embedded with gentle resistance bands that keep muscles engaged even during routine work. Think of it as a wearable gym, a subtle futuristic upgrade to fight the toll of microgravity. In Tiangong, every heartbeat, every flex of muscle, every drop of sweat is part of a grand experiment, not just to survive in space, but to learn how humans can truly live there. At its core, Tiangong isn't just a home in space, it's a laboratory for the future of humanity beyond Earth. Every wall, every panel, every piece of equipment here is designed to explore how life and matter behave in microgravity. Across its three modules, Tiangong houses 23 internal experiment racks and 50 external platforms for instruments mounted on the hull. That's a dense scientific payload for a station of this size. Nearly every cubic meter serves a purpose. The fields of research are vast, fluid physics, where scientists observe how liquids move without gravity's pull, combustion, testing how flames behave when there's no up or down, material science, studying alloys and semiconductors that can only form in microgravity, and biology and medicine, exploring how human cells adapt, or fail to, in the vacuum of space. One of Tiangong's most fascinating features lies in the Mengtian module, a dedicated airlock system for experiments. Here, astronauts can set up scientific packages inside the module, then load them into a sealed compartment. With the push of a button, the chamber depressurizes and opens to space, where a robotic arm either retrieves or installs the experiment on the station's exterior. No bulky spacewalk required. Inside, the crew is also working on space agriculture, cultivating lettuce and leafy greens in small hydroponic trays. The goal isn't just food, it's sustainability. Future experiments will test oxygen recycling systems that integrate with plant growth, creating the foundation for a closed life support loop on long duration missions. But Tiangong isn't operating in isolation. In 2023, nine international research projects were approved in collaboration with the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs and the European Space Agency. These include studies on radiation shielding, protein crystallization, and cosmic dust analysis, proof that China's heavenly palace is slowly opening its doors to the world's scientists. From the outside, Tiangong may look small, but inside, it carries the ambitions of an entire civilization and the data that could define humanity's future among the stars. Well, I have hinted on this earlier, but let's zoom in further. If science is Tiangong's heart, then its robotic arms are the hands that make it all possible. The station is equipped with three EVA suits, stored in the Wentian module's airlock, each custom-tailored for its wearer and rated for up to eight hours of continuous use. Spacewalks, or EVAs, extravehicular activities, are now a regular part of Tiangong's operations, from installing new equipment to testing repairs in the harsh vacuum of space. Supporting them are the station's two mechanical giants. The Tianhe core module carries a 10-meter-long robotic arm, while Wentian adds a 5-meter arm of its own. Individually, they're powerful, but when combined, they form a single 15-meter system, rivaling the legendary Canadarm 2 on the International Space Station. These arms are not just for heavy lifting. They can precisely grasp experiment modules, assist taikonauts during spacewalks, or even reposition small spacecraft docking with Tiangong. During recent EVAs, the arms were used to install handrails and connectors across the station's exterior, allowing astronauts to move safely between modules during future maintenance. Each arm segment can pivot, rotate and extend with millimeter precision, guided by operators inside the station or by mission control on Earth. In theory, these robotic limbs could one day grapple entire modules, helping assemble the next generation of Chinese orbital infrastructure or even assist with spacecraft docking autonomously. They are extensions of human hands, reaching farther and working longer than any astronaut could. Together, they make Tiangong not just a home, but a living machine evolving one orbit at a time. Tiangong may look complete, but this is only the beginning. China's space agency has already unveiled phase two, a plan to double the size of the station over the next few years. 
A new multi-docking adapter will be added to the front of the Tianhe core module, allowing for three additional laboratory modules to connect. This would expand Tiangong from its current three-module configuration to six, increasing its total habitable volume from roughly 20% to nearly 40% of the International Space Station. Once finished, the new setup would resemble two T-shapes stacked together, a cross-shaped structure that not only looks elegant but dramatically increases docking ports for visiting spacecraft and experiments. To build it, China plans to reuse its powerful Long March 5B rockets, the same boosters that launched the original modules in 2021 and 2022. Engineers are also considering incorporating a backup copy of the Tianhe core module, which was built as a contingency unit during the first phase. If attached, it would serve as a secondary command and living hub, giving Tiangong even greater redundancy and flexibility. But expansion isn't just about hardware, it's about people. China has confirmed that the first international astronaut from Pakistan is already in training to join a future mission. Talks are underway with other countries, as China aims to make Tiangong a platform for global cooperation, open to partners who've never before had access to crude orbital research. Orbiting nearby, a new eye on the cosmos is preparing to join them. The Zuntian Space Telescope, sometimes called the Chinese Hubble, is slated to launch around 2026. It will carry a 2-meter primary mirror and an astonishing 2.5-gigapixel camera with a field of view 300 times wider than the Hubble Space Telescope. Unlike Hubble, Zuntian will share Tiangong's orbit, allowing it to periodically dock for refueling, maintenance, and upgrades, something no Western telescope has ever been able to do. Together, Tiangong and Suntian will form the core of China's orbital science ecosystem, combining human presence with robotic observation, a partnership between machine precision and human intuition.